Howdy, Bestie here with uh, another project day. Today we are going to do ball joint, tie rod end, and wheel bearing on my project 2002 uh, TDI Jetta. It's a Mark IV Jetta. Uh, the wheel bearing, so here's your hub and the spindle here and the wheel bearing is, is pressed in here. There's actually two sides to it. Your shock sits down in this piece and your brake caliper hangs on here and of course the wheel bolts on to this piece here and it's you really need a press to put these bearings in and out so what the average guy does and what I do is I take the hub off and unfortunately it makes it a two-day process but I take the hub off take it down to the local um, auto guy it, it could be like a pet boys or it could be a um, I use RPM Automotive here locally, and they'll press in the new bearing for you. The bearings come, uh, there's, there's really two kinds of bearings that you can get. Uh, there's the, the Chinese or Taiwanese bearing, and then there's the German bearing. And, uh, so it's worth it to buy the extra 20 bucks for the, the higher grade uh, bearings. Uh, so really, I'm not going to show you how to press in the new bearing and press it out. I don't have a press. Average guy doesn't. If you do have a press, then you probably know how to use it. Then special tools we're going to need today, because it's a VW, you got to have this guy for getting the shock out. Uh, man, I'm not focusing here. Basically, this is a little oblong shock tool. They're between seven and twelve bucks. Uh, I believe this is the one from Metal Nerd. I really wish I could get this to focus for you. Uh, you really can't do the shocks without this little tool, so I highly recommend just going ahead and buying one. And then because we're going to pull off the ball joint and the uh, tie rod end, we might need this tie rod end puller. If you don't own one of these, uh, they're not expensive. I think they're about 15 bucks at like Napa. Um, we'll see if we need it. Sometimes they pop out without having to use the puller, but I've got it out here just in case. Axle nut that goes on the end is a 30 millimeter. So there's my 30 millimeter, and I have checked them. I know that I have the standard six point. The one that comes on the car is a 12 point. So you may need a 30 millimeter 12 point. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get there. But that's the uh, the big socket of that axle nut. Gonna need a new one because again, that's one of those one time use items. So that's the nut that I'm gonna take off that holds the uh, hub onto the CV joint axle and I'm gonna have to replace it with a new one so I already have my new one here. Now that we got the lug nuts broken loose we're gonna break loose this uh, this big nut There's that troublesome nut. Okay, so here we're going in for a close-up, try to show you some of the bolts I'll be talking about. It's difficult to uh, film them up underneath the car, but here you can see I've got the jack underneath the A-arm, putting just a little bit of tension on it. So now I can take this bolt out, and that's the end link to the sway bar, and then I can swing that up out of the way. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take the brake caliper off. So this here is the brake caliper and there's two bolts. One here and one on the bottom down here and they're an Allen. You just back those out and then this whole brake caliper will slide up off. Let me see if I can get a look. Oh, there's a cap. I don't know if you can see that plastic cap. So I take that plastic cap off. There we go. And inside there is an Allen head. Okay, 16 millimeter on my ratchet, taking that end link bolt out. Okay, so there's my seven millimeter Allen key. Okay, now we're ready to take off that caliper, 
and I gotta have something to set it on so I don't stretch the brake line. Sometimes you have to tap them a little bit to get them to come out. You basically tip the top out and then lift it up a little bit. Take this brake disc off. There's one single countersunk screw here. All right, dust covers out of the way. Is the tie rod end for the steering arm here. And what we're gonna do is break this nut loose and we're gonna thread this off a little bit later on. I'm gonna leave it pretty close to where it was and thread the new one on that same amount so my alignment isn't too far out. This is why I'm replacing the uh, tie rod ends. You can see that boot is ripped so the bearing that's in there will get all full of gunk. This nut off here and then thread this off of that rod. Often we got lucky that it came loose. This is sometimes where you either have to tap it a little bit, use a pickle fork to drive in here to pop it out, or use this press to drive it up out. I'm going to hold the axle with a 13 on, those, on the flats back here, and then put a 19 here. And because we already loosened it, it should be fairly simple. Trying to keep that nut in the same place so we can get the alignment pretty close when we put it back together. Okay, so now I've got the three bolts underneath to take the ball joint off of that lower A-arm. And it's getting kind of tough for me to try to film, so I'm going to try to do this here. So we're looking at the bottom here of the ball joint, and those are the three 13 millimeters that i got to take off next. So... And that's the nut holder that was on top. Okay, before we get this hub busted loose and ready to, ready to come out, we need to take the uh, brake, the ABS brake warning here. This is the ABS sensor. And there's just an, a little electrical clip here. Sometimes you gotta pop that grommet out first. Uh, and sometimes you can't get them by hand. There we go. So that comes off. Take that out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to get the shock up out of the hub. This is uh, one of the hardest things to show you here on the video. But there's a single bolt here. So there's the bolt. Next step is to take that special tool, stick it in this slot. I don't know if you can see here. You gotta stick it in that slot right here, because this tab, this tab here, extends past this bolt hole all the way down. So if you put it, try to use it up here, it isn't gonna work. You gotta use it in this lower little notch right here. Sometimes you can get away with using a 3 8 to quarter inch socket adapter. Same principle. Stick it in the slot there and then rotate it about 45 degrees to spread this open. But I'm going to use a special tool since I have it open. Ooh, just a little further. Right about there. Now I can take the socket off and now I don't know if you can see from me wiggling it, but the shock, there we go, the shock is now loose in that stud. I'm sorry, the, the strut is now loose from the uh, hub. Next step is to try to pull this axle out of the hub. Sometimes this is pretty tricky, sometimes they just come right out. Uh, sometimes you can tap it a little bit here, and the worst case scenario you end up using a gear puller that threads into where the wheel bolts go 
the lug lug nuts, lug bolts, and then a pin pushes into the axle to push it in. Sometimes you can tap on it a little bit, but you want to be careful not to bugger up any threads. No, I don't want to tap on it any harder. Sometimes you can use a pry bar, something like this, and pry it up out of here. Okay, sometimes this drive axle is, is a little bit problematic like this one's being. So I shot a little bit of PB Blaster up into those splines and let it sit for a few minutes. I had tried the pry bar. Be careful not to bugger up the uh, rubber boot back here. If you're pry barring, I tried pry barring a little bit. I was afraid I was going to get that rubber boot. So I took an old extension. Being careful not to bugger up the threads where that nut has to go. You could even put that old nut on just a little bit if you need to. And then I just banged on it a little bit. And I can feel it coming loose. It's going in. Okay, so the axle is loose. Now the tricky part of sliding out the ball joint out of that A-arm, sliding the axle out of the hub, and sliding the hub down off that shock all at the same time. And that's a little tricky. And there we there's the wheel bearing that needs replaced. Now's a good view of that special tool wedged in there. I'm going to go ahead and take that out and put it up before I forget. The ball joint is much like the end of the tie rod end. Here's the new one. That's just a plastic cover to protect the boot while it's in shipping. Again, if that boot is eaten up, that's a good time to replace the ball joints. But if you look, you might have to take a pick and clean that out a little bit to make sure it fits all the way down in there so you don't strip it. Put a shot of PB Blaster in there. Now. Okay, so now I need to drive this out. Since I'm not reusing it, I'm just going to use a hammer and tap on it here and pop it out. Again, sometimes you have to use a puller. If you bang on it, uh, let me rephrase that, only bang on it if you're not going to reuse this. Another technique is to put a pickle fork. That's the most common, but the pickle fork will eat up that rubber boot. So don't do it on one that you're going to reuse. So now, just so it doesn't get goobered up while the guy is trying to press in the new bearing, not a bad idea to take our ABS sensor out. It's just a single Allen. It's a 5 millimeter Allen. And then you just pull this guy, wiggle in it. Be careful not to break this. We're going to slide that out of the hole it's in. You can pry just a little bit just to get them started wiggling. And then don't forget to put it back in. So I'm going to run this down, get a new bearing pressed in. We'll take off this lower A-arm and then we'll put it all back together. Okay, now we're ready to take off this lower A-arm. Two bolts that hold it. There's one here with a nut on the top. So you got to hold the nut from the top while you get the bolt head and drop that bolt out. This one's a little bit tricky. The best way to get the head here is to bring a wrench in from the back side. Then you can use your socket on the head of the bolt. Okay, so there's the nut and bolt.
here we are looking at the front of the A-arm. Here's where we took the bolt out of the sway bar end link. So there's that bolt, 18 millimeter bolt that we got to take out of the uh, A-arm. And there's your bolt. So we'll set that aside. Now it might take a little bit. This joint, that bushing there actually has to go forward and out. It won't come straight out because there's a little bump on those two pieces. So usually you can kind of wiggle that front out. And if you have to, you can use your old trusty pry bar and put it in behind it and pry it out a little bit. Okay, so there the front came out. So now we're gonna push this in and bring it out forward, like so. And there's your old A-arm. See that bushing's pretty eaten up, which is why I wanted to replace those bushings. So here's our new A-arm. And what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the Sil Glide lubricant on each of these faces. On here and here and then both sides up top, and then we'll push it into place. Maybe I'll take a rag and wipe those out a little bit quick first. Okay, once we get it put in, then we'll wipe off the excess with a rag just so it doesn't trap sand and grit from the road. Just like putting it in, or I'm sorry, like taking it out, you gotta stick it in a little bit forward and then pull it back out. Now I'm gonna put this bolt in, finger tight, and then we'll torque it here in a little bit. So now I'm going to torque the back one down. The uh, torque spec from the manual is 52 foot-pounds plus a quarter a turn because these are stretch bolts. Okay, through the magic of video, I'm back with my hub with the new wheel bearing pressed in. I've put my ABS sensor back on. So now I'm going to put the new ball joint into the bottom of the hub. And I like to put just a dab of anises on that surface here in the hole because they tend to rust into place and get really hard to remove. I don't want to get any on the threads because I don't want anises on the thread and that bolt wandering off. So I'm going to be very careful just... Okay, since that's a nylock nut, I don't need to put any thread dressing on, any Loctite. So now, I'm just going to put that sucker on and start the nut. And remember that these ball joints do come in a left and right. So make sure you're putting the correct one on. I'm going to put just a hair of anises on these splines, not on the threads. Don't want them on the threads. Uh, you could just use a little bit of grease, but just a little something to keep that from rusting into the splines on the inside of your hub. And now we have that reverse process of feeding the axle back through the hub while trying to fit the shock into the top of the hub and trying to fit these, this flange with these three holes into that slot on the A-arm. Trying to do that all at once can be a little bit tricky. You just gotta kinda work a little bit here, a little bit there, and check each of those three as you're going. Oh, almost forgot. Before we even start that, we gotta put that special tool 
back in this bottom bottom slot here. Okay, there's the shock bolt through, just finger tight for right now. Make sure the axle's feeding through okay. Sometimes you have to turn it a little bit, make sure your splines are lining up. And then you can put your big nut on there. Got one lined up. Put the nut on, just hold it in place. And since those are aircraft nuts, I'm sorry, nylock nuts with the nylon insert in them, we don't need to put any uh, Loctite on the threads of these bolts. Remember that the stock ones are one-time use. Now we're going to go ahead and torque down that shock bolt, 44 foot-pounds. Okay. So now we're going to put the tie rod end on. I'm going to put a little bit of anisease on here since there's a lock nut just because that always rusts up and put just a drop of anisease in the hole there. Now we can go ahead and hook up our ABS sensor. You just slide that sucker on there until it clicks into place. Like so. And then put the grommet back in on the shock, or the strut rather. Just like we did to take the end link out, we're going to compress the shock a little bit by putting the jack up under here and then we'll get this bolt back into the end link on the sway bar and while we have the shock compressed a little bit then I can torque that front bolt back here on the A arm which I forgot to mention some people will call a control arm Okay, so we'll get this wheel back on. Torque wrench, gonna set this to 184. I'm sorry, 187. And according to the manual, now you spin the tire 180 degrees, so you got to roll the car forward a little bit and then retorque it. If you don't have the torque wrench that goes to uh, 187 foot pounds, I would just get it as tight as you can. If you can get 150 on there, 
you'll be fine to get down to the place that does your alignment. Just drive straight there, ask them to do the alignment, and then retorque those, uh, those axle nuts for you. There you have it. It's all back together. Not too bad of a project. If you have suggestions or another way to do it or a question, go ahead and please put it in the comments to help out the next guy that watches the video. Uh, disclaimer here, I'm not a super professional. I'm not out making a buck. Uh, just having fun working on the old VWs. Um, so there are other techniques to do some of this stuff. Uh, do it to your own car at your own risk. Make sure you follow the torque specs. And don't forget, once you do this, you need to go down and get in alignment so you don't wear out your tires. Your car will handle different. Um, and you got to get those nuts retorqued if you didn't get those, uh, if you couldn't torque those up yourself. And that's really important because you don't want to lose a wheel. Again, thanks for watching. Have a good day.